Sorry about that. That was strange. That never happened before. Well, uh, again, this is Brother Mike. I'm back on my live uh, Sunday morning uh, podcast at 9 a.m. Mountain Time. If you need to get a hold of me, you send me an email at mike at hardcorechristianity.com. And uh, I answer all my emails and answer them quickly. Please remember that we have uh, two live deliverance services every week uh, on Zoom. Send me an email and I'll send you the, the idea code and the uh, password. We also have two live services every week, Thursday and Friday nights at the Arizona Deliverance Center. They are broadcast live on our YouTube channel on and on four other platforms. Go to youtube.com slash House of Healing AZ, and you'll be able to watch both of our live services uh, every week, Thursday and Friday nights. That starts at 7 o'clock Mountain Time, 7 p.m. Mountain Time. So we thank you for tuning into the programs. We've had very good responses. We have healing and deliverance and teaching at both of those services. I usually teach on Friday nights. I leave my mic on so you can hear what goes on during the deliverance. And uh, I make mistakes on Friday night. You'll get to hear those. I also do some things that are helpful. You'll also be able to hear hear those. And so I leave all that stuff uh, open for everybody to learn from. Because my goal here is not just to have a deliverance ministry for Brother Mike. My goal is to trigger this thing and crank it. So that all around the country, people are opening up terror cells in their own church. And they are getting together two or three. The Bible says where two or three gather together, there am I in the midst. The Holy Ghost is right there. That's a terror cell. You open up a terror cell in your church and then you start picking off the sick people. You pick them off one at a time. Word will spread quickly. Your group will uh, rapidly grow. You'll have them standing in line, ready to get healed and delivered, and uh, then you'll get kicked out. Your church will kick you out. The board members will file complaints, and the pastor or somebody will send somebody, usually not the pastor. The pastor will send somebody to you saying, uh, you're ham and eggs, you got to go. That is not a bad thing. That is a good thing. That is God promoting you from from the church you're in to your new ministry. And uh, stay strong and go for it. That happened to me years ago at the Dream Center in Scottsdale, Arizona. I was, uh, I had my own terror cell. I opened up a terror cell in the church. And initially the terror cell was me. And uh, after that, it started growing and then it got too big. And if it gets too big, you're in trouble. I got a Bible study for you today. This is a story for the ages. There's nothing quite like it anywhere in the New Testament. It's This thing's off the chain, powerful. And that's exactly what you're looking for for 2023. That's exactly what you are looking for. Something unbelievably powerful. And you need look no further than this podcast. I have it for you today. Let's go to it. Luke chapter 7, verse 36. Here we go. It's utterly amazing. One of the Pharisees, this was a guy named Simon. Simon was a very common name back then. Um, It was kind of like my name, Mike, you know. Uh, For for many years here in the United States, uh, the the most popular name to name a child used to be Mike. For some reason, it was tremendously popular. 50s, 60s, 70s, a lot of kids named Mike. Well, they had that back then, too. They had Simon was one of them. Simon was a very popular name. John was a very popular name back then. Ionis is John in in the Greek. And uh, here we have Simon. And it says, one of the Pharisees, Simon, desired that Jesus would come eat lunch with him. So Jesus went to the Pharisee's house and he sat down to meet. Now here, whenever I read the word of God, what I try to do in my mind, I try to pretend I am standing there watching what's going on, literally watching it. I'm looking at it, and I'm watching what's happening in the scripture. And here I'm watching, and I see Anaclino. It says he sat down to meet. This is the King James Version. Anaclino means to lay down. 
to lean back and lay down to eat. You see, back then, not everybody had had chairs, and so everybody sat around the dinner table, so to speak. It was a centerpiece, circular, and the, the bowls were all put down there, and then the guests would lay down around the centerpiece where the food was, and everybody would dip, you know, the King James Version was a sop. They would dip the avocado, they would take off a piece of bread, roll the bowl to the next guy, push it over there. Then everybody ate in the circular area. And then the the uh, servants of the house would stand back to the sides of the room and replenish the bowls and refill the, uh, the water cups, the water bowls. Okay, so you see here that Jesus and his entourage, the disciples and whoever was with them, came to Simon's house. They're all laying around eating. Some of them are standing who are not eating. And suddenly something unbelievable happens. The whore from the neighborhood, a woman in the city, which was a sinner. The Greek word is hamartalus, and it means somebody who practices living in sin. This Greek word would have applied to me before I became a born-again Christian. I was a hamartalus, and uh, hamartalus need mercy, what they need. And uh, this story is going to shock you, literally shock you. It says here, when this uh, bargain basement whore knew that Jesus was uh, laying down eating, it says here in the Greek, in the Pharisee's house, she came down there and she brought with her an alabastrone. Uh, an alabastrone is an alabaster box. Okay, And these boxes uh they actually they actually weren't a square box like you and i would think of as a box okay they were a container made out of ivory they were very expensive and inside these containers some very expensive myrrh was kept and there were all kinds of different kinds of myrrh but this myrrh usually came from was imported from italy and it was very expensive extremely expensive and she had an ointment in there. Muran is the Greek word. It means myrrh. It was one of the uh, gifts that the wise men gave to Jesus when he was a toddler. He was two or three years old when they found him at Nazareth in the house. And they gave uh, Joseph and Mary Muran to, uh, so that they would have enough money to raise Jesus. Remember, remember that God always, always meets your needs. And if God is not meeting your needs, the demons are blocking it. All you have to do is remove that block and your needs will be met. I've been a counselor for 40 years now, over 40. And what I noticed is, and this has always come true, when I'm counseling Christians, if their basic needs are not being met, their basic needs, that's demonic. Something's blocking those needs from being met because God never doesn't meet the needs of his children. He doesn't give you all your wants. That's for sure. I'm a living testament to it. Man, I didn't get everything I wanted. That's for sure. But I always got everything I needed. If someone doesn't have their needs met, the demons are blocking it in some way, in some way. And Jesus always had his needs met. And it was always provided for by the Holy Ghost. And that is true of you. You will always have your needs met, period. It will never, the devil can never stop that. If it's being blocked, someone's doing something, could be a witchcraft curse, could be a word curse, could be hidden sin, could be unbelief, could be doubt, could be something on your end blocking your needs from being met. But your Heavenly Father never doesn't meet his children's needs. Your wants? No, that's a different Bible study. And it says here, she stood at his feet. Pus is the Greek word for feet. Okay, now that means, once again, Jesus is laying down. He's laying down, eating. And that's what they did back then, because as you know, nobody Ubered anything. The common people all walked everywhere they wanted to go. 
you know, nobody could fo- afford horses. Nobody could get a ride in a carriage, so to speak, um, a human carriage where, you know, four men would carry someone on poles where you were up in the carriage. No, that never happened. You had to walk everywhere. So everybody was exhausted all the time from walking. And when they ate, they laid down to eat. They reclined. That's what that Greek word means. And it says she stood behind his feet, pus, and began to wash his feet with tears. Okay? The Greek word for wash there uh, doesn't mean scrub. It is The Greek word is breko, and it means to moisten. So what she was doing there, this prostitute was leaning over his feet. She knelt down and leaned over his feet, and the tears were coming out and dropping on his feet, is what it means. And it says she anointed them with ointment from the alabaster box, the alabastro, the muran, the myrrh. She put the myrrh on his feet, along with the tears. And it says she was washing them, breko. She was moistening them, and the Bible says she was wiping wiping down the tears and wiping on the muran, the myrrh, on his feet. Now, remember, Jesus got anointed three times before he was murdered by the Jews and the Romans. Three times. Simon the Pharisee, Simon the leper, and at Lazarus' house with Martha and Mary, if you remember that. So you get the scenario here. But it gets deeper. It says she was weeping. Okay? The Greek word, therefore, weeping, is not the normal Greek word, dakruo. Dakruo means to shed a few tears and weep a little bit, kind of like you would at a funeral. Just wipe away a couple of tears there. This Greek word is not that one. This is klio. She was wailing. So what had happened here, you're having a quiet afternoon lunch at a Pharisee's house, a very important man. And a prostitute comes staggering down the street, consumed with clinical depression, loaded with demons, and loaded with guilt and shame. This woman was shot. She had been shunned by society. Uh, Only uh, people obviously went to her as they do now. Nobody openly goes to a prostitute. They do it in secret. They make appointments, that kind of thing. This woman had been shunned by society. She was suffering from clinical depression. She was loaded with spirits. She had to earn a living, uh, whoring herself out. It could have been a worse life. And here she hears about Yeshua, Yahshua, Jesus at Simon the Pharisee's house. She would have never gone down to the Pharisee's house normally because she would have been condemned to the gates of hell because of who she was and what she did. But now she's, she comes in and disrupts the lunch, goes around behind Jesus, kneels down behind his feet, and starts wailing, weeping and crying out loud, wailing. Can you imagine what's going on in this Pharisee's home right now? Everybody's in a state of shock. She's making this huge clamor behind him. She's wailing, crying, heaving tears everybody's watching this and then the muran the myrrh fills the whole house because she's pouring it on his feet and anointing his feet this stuff was very expensive it had a powerful odor to it it was really fantastic and prostitutes had these um uh, these um uh, alabastron boxes the containers for the myrrh The high class whores had them because these things cost a lot of money. The container cost a lot of money and the myrrh cost even more money. And they broke that stuff out for their high paying jobs. So the scenario here right now is one of enormous disruption. The second thing you might want to notice here as you're watching this scenario 
through you in your mind's eye there is the guts and the desperation of this poor woman having to expose herself in front of all these self-righteous religious people, Jews and Christians. Can you imagine the nerve and the courage and the desperation it took for this woman to have done this that day? It was astronomical. Verse 39, now when the Pharisee, which asked Jesus uh, to uh, come for lunch, saw what was going on, it says, he spoke, he spoke within himself, saying, Greek word is lego. Now that Greek word lego is exactly the Greek word that you use when you say something to somebody. It means to speak to someone. Lego. I I am talking to you right now. Lego. But it's, it qualifies it here in the text, saying that he was talking to himself in his head. He was having a meeting in his mind. And he told himself, he's talking to himself, and he's got Jesus figured out now. What's going on right now has revealed the secrets, and he's now, he's got it. Jesus is a fake. He says to himself, quote, this man, if he were a prophet, the Greek word is prophetes. A prophetes was a person who spoke in the presence, in the absence of God. A prophetes, a prophet, speaks in God's place. Okay? There are very, very few, probably just a handful of prophets in the United States. There are thousands and thousands of people who claim to be prophets, and they are not. Trust me. If somebody says they're prophet this and prophet that, man, run for the hills. You can be sure that person is, they're fake. They were looking for a real prophet, and Simon uh, supposedly had heard that Jesus was a prophet, but now he tricked him and caught him, and now he's a false prophet. Because he said he would have known what manner of woman that is touching him. For she is a, what? Sinner. Harmatelos. She is a woman who practices living in sin. Verse 40. And Jesus answering him. Now, Jesus is answering somebody talking to themselves in their head. Of course he did. Because he had the gift of knowledge running at maximum capacity. So Jesus heard what the guy was saying. To himself. Then Jesus said, Simon, I have something to ask you. And Simon says, quote, Master, go ahead, speak it out. The Greek word for master there is didaskalos, and it means teacher. So when Jesus came there, Simon did not do anything special for him because number one, he had heard he was a prophet, but he wanted to see if he was a false prophet. He didn't want to risk it because of the other Pharisees were going to hear about this. Then he didn't call him a prophet. He called him a teacher because he knew he was a teacher. The question was, was he a false teacher? And that's what Simon had done that day. He asked Jesus to come have lunch with him because he wanted to check him out. He wanted to see in his mind. Is this guy a fake? Is he a fraud? And that will happen to everyone who uh, preaches the true gospel. The devil will send people along to you to see if you're a fake. Are you faking? Somebody's going to come check you out. I've been checked out thousands of times over the years and have enjoyed it every second. Jesus says to him, now, Simon, I want to ask you a question. Now, there was a certain creditor which had two debtors. It's one owed them 500 denarii. What is a denarii? Well, it was a small coin that wasn't worth very much. You know, kind of like it would be kind of similar to us if we had a quarter, a denarii. And he said the other guy owed him 50 denarii. And 
Neither of them had any money. They were broke. They couldn't pay any of it back. Okay, they borrowed the money. They spent it. And they were not able to replenish it. They, they, they welched, right? That's the old term that we used to use. <laughs> I'm dating myself now, aren't I? They welched on the on on the on the loan, welched on the bet, so to speak. And he says the the creditor, frankly, forgave them. Now this is the Greek word, karizomai. Karizomai means to show favor on a person or show. Uh, um, Mercy on the person, to show kindness to a person, to, uh, you know, show gratuity to a person. It doesn't mean the Greek word forgive, which is a theme, where we come to Christ and he forgives our sins. That's not the Greek word. This is a different Greek word. It says here the, the creditor showed him a favor, did a favor to them, both of them. He just forgave them. They didn't know him. They owed him zero denarium. And then Jesus said, tell me, which of them will love him the most? Now, here's an interesting word. It says, will love him. Will love, agapao, is a Greek verb for the Greek noun, agape. And it means to show love to a person. Agapao. He's saying, which of these two uh, creditors will show love to the, excuse me, which of those two debtors will show love to the creditor, the guy that loaned the money. What do you think, Simon? Think about it. And Simon then says, verse 43, Simon says, I suppose, uh, I'm, I'm getting some amens on this teaching from my dog, Lexi. And Simon says, uh, I suppose he whom he forgave most. And Jesus said to him, you judged correctly. And then something amazing happens. It says he turned to the woman. The Greek word strepho means to twist. He's on his on his elbows here talking to uh, Simon, or he's on this elbow and he's laying down on his side, or he's laying on his tummy with both elbows. He's talking to Simon, and then he then he twists back. He twists back, and he looks at her, and he says to Simon while he's looking at her. He says, you see this woman, I entered into your house and you did not give me any water for my feet. Now understand, Simon invited him there, there for nefarious reasons. Whenever you had a stranger come to your home, it was a common custom in Israel throughout the whole country. It was just a common custom like, let's say we would have a handshake. You know, hi, how are you? That's just like just like another thing. You always wash somebody's feet, obviously, because number one, everybody wore sandals. Number two, everybody had dirty feet. And it was a common gesture of friendship and common, simple courtesy to wash somebody's feet. He didn't do it. He didn't do it because he had a nefarious reasons. He was he thought Jesus was a fraud, and he brought him there to try and prove his bias. And that's what we have in our society now. Everybody is biased. Nobody cares about the truth anymore. They, they just want you to affirm their personal bias. He said, he twists around. He said, you see this woman? When I came to your house, you didn't give me any water for my feet. Poos. But she, she has washed my feet, break go, she moistened my feet, and then she washed my feet with her tears. And it says she wiped them with her hair. You didn't give me a kiss when I came in. 
What does that mean? Well, it sounds weird. Well, again, it was just a common custom, Eastern custom. It was true of uh, Israelites and Arabs and, you know, just like another thing. Everybody just had, you know, you give them a little peck on the cheek. It was, uh, hi, you're welcome in my home. Let me wash your feet. Please have lunch. Thank you for visiting my home. Common courtesy is what it was. Jesus told him a parable involving common courtesy and involving exceptional courtesy. Simon didn't even have common courtesy, and he wasn't even close to the creditor in that parable that Jesus shared with him. He didn't even have common courtesy. Never gave him a kiss, never washed him, washed his feet. What was he doing? He was doing exactly what you did last year, 2022. You took Jesus casually. You kind of reached a point in your life where Jesus was, I don't know, kind of run of the mill. You kind of expected him to be there. A lot of people treat God like a spare tire in a car. You know, they're, they're going to town. They blow a flat. They get the spare out. They ride them to town. And then when they're done, they put the thing back in the trunk. They get the other tire fixed. Simon was taking Jesus and made him common, which is not what you're going to do in 2023. You're going to kill this thing in 2023. Trust me. You are going to smash records in 2023. You are never going to take Jesus common ever again in 2023. You did in 2022. You're going to beg God to forgive you, and you're going to be forgiven. And then you're going to kill this thing. And the devil's going to be sorry he ever ripped into your soul. That's, he's going to say, man, I should have let that one go. He said, look at this woman. She's washing my feet. She won't stop kissing my feet. Katafileo means to aggressively kiss someone. Okay. So, you know, this morning. I gave my wife a kiss. Hi, sweetheart. I'll pretend my hand's my wife. Hi, morning. Hi, sweetheart. I gave her a kiss. I did not do what this woman was doing, okay? Have you ever seen a, a soap opera or a movie or something where uh, somebody gets a romantic or sexual kiss, like a French kiss, and they really dive into it? Right? Yeah, you've done that before. You French kissed before during sex, foreplay for sex, and you got busy. That's what this is. Catafileo. She was aggressively, aggressively kissing Jesus's feet. And again, this was in front of everybody. Simon didn't have the guts to say what he was thinking, but Jesus heard him through the gift of knowledge. He heard what he was said to himself in his head. This woman who was a sinner put Simon to shame. She had courage and desperation beyond any person in that room. She made a complete fool out of the disciples. She made a fool out of the Jews. She made a fool out of everybody that was in that room because this woman and this parable, this story is so important to 2023 for you. This woman went above and beyond any minister, any pastor, any evangelist, anybody in how you should be approaching the Lord Jesus. And you're going to do that in 2023. You're not just going to casually come in and say, hi, how you doing? What's up? That's not going to happen this year. You're going to come in aggressively. You're going to come in with passion. You're going to come in with determination. You're going to push this thing. And you're going to win. You're going to win huge. He says, look, she's, she has not ceased to stop kissing my feet. Look, she anointed my head with oil. With oil. Can you imagine that? You didn't anoint my head with oil, but this woman has anointed my feet with ointment. Amazing. 
she ordered uh, what is going on here see the difference the disciples that were standing around they represent the church the fair, Simon the Pharisee they represent the nitpickers in the church the, the people who stand by righteously criticizing you and pointing out your faults. This woman represents somebody the Holy Ghost can use for a miracle ministry of deliverance and healing. This woman represents what you have to do in 2023. Verse 47, therefore Jesus said, I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. Now Jesus uses the regular Greek word here, the regular Greek word is used here for forgiven. Aphiomi, it means to release. When you got forgiven of your sins, the blood of Christ, Christ released you from your sins and they no longer exist. You no longer have them. And she said she has been forgiven. For she loved much. Same Greek word, agapao. It's a Greek verb. And it means she showed love much, greatly. The Greek word is palus, much. It means greatly. She showed love greatly. But he said, to whom little is forgiven, a theony, released of the same shows little love. And he says to the woman, your sins are forgiven. And then everybody starts to talk to themselves in their mind again. Verse 49, and they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, who is this man that forgives sins also? And Jesus ignored what they were saying to themselves. He didn't do it this time. He may have known what they were saying, but he said nothing. But he turns and to the woman and he says, he says, your, your faith has saved you. Sozo, Greek word, sozo, delivered you. Your faith has delivered you. Go in peace. Go in peace. Can you imagine that? Wow, what a story for you in 2023. Okay? This is your story. This is what you're going to do in 2023. You're not going back to 2022. No, that's not going to happen. Okay? You're going to become, a, uh, as, as, as Mickey said to Rocky in uh, Rocky 1, you remember that? He says, uh, now this string cured it. And he says, if you learn to move, you learn to hit, and you learn to fight with this, using this string, he said, you become a very dangerous poison. You become a very dangerous poison. That's you in 2023. You're going to become a very dangerous poison. You know why? You're not going to come to Jesus casually anymore. Mm -mm. No. You're not going to be like this Pharisee or the or the disciples standing around staring and watching and wondering what's going on here. No. Mm -hmm. You know what you're going to do? You're going to be bold. You're going to be courageous like this woman. She was bold. She was courageous. She was desperate. Do you happen to notice that going through the Word of God, New Testament, not one person who was desperate for a miracle from God ever left without that miracle? Do you happen to notice that the people who were not desperate for God did not leave with a miracle? Yeah, you know, if you go to church too much and you've been a Christian for a really long time, that's very bad for you. 
because psychology kicks in, right? The psychiatric concept of systematic desensitization kicks in. That's what's happened to sin in our society. You know, uh, back when I was a kid, I'm an old man now, and back in the 50s or 60s when I was young, nobody, nobody would let a drag queen twerk in the face of a third grader. I mean, that, that would have never happened. But through systematic desensitization, it means to be consistently and repetitively exposed to something over a period of time, you become desensitized to it. It doesn't seem real anymore. Uh, go to, going to an extreme example. The Nazis were systematically desensitized. They shot a guy in the head, unarmed person. They dropped dead. The first time they did it, it bothered them. The second time they did it, it kind of hurt a bit. But by the 15th or 20th person they had shot in the head and watched them fall over, they didn't feel it anymore. They were systematically desensitized. If you've been in church a long time, that's very dangerous because you become desensitized to what the woman with the alabaster box felt. See, the, the whore in this story was the only one in the room that got a miracle. Did you know that? Did you see that? The religious people got nothing. The, the, the Christian disciples, they got nothing. In Simon the leper, when, when uh, Jesus was anointed at Simon the leper's house, that was a later incident. One of the disciples, Judas, filed a complaint. He said, man, we shouldn't be pouring this moron on Jesus. This is nuts. We should have sold that. That thing was worth a lot of money. Well, yeah, you know, she she uh, cranked out a lot of tricks to get, get the alabaster box and the, the ointment. That cost a lot of money. But she flipped it financially and made much more than she invested because of her uh, more expensive johns. But that woman was so ashamed, so lonely, so lost, and so sick of being demon-infected, and so sick of sliding down through the gates of hell, that she became desperate. And she came to Jesus. She was not systematically desensitized to Christ. He was a fresh savior to her. And you know what the problem is? The main problem? You forgot. You forgot. Have you been a Christian a long time? Oh, that can be a big problem, can it? Yeah, being a Christian a long, a long time is really not good. Because you kind of now taking Jesus for granted. You take the church service for granted. You take the praise for granted. Oh, you somebody teaches out of the Bible. You kind of take that for granted. You've heard a thousand Bible stories. You've heard a thousand Bible studies. You've heard a thousand sermons. I don't know. You're not there anymore. You kind of check out in church. You ever stand in the back of your church sometime? Go ahead and do it. You'll be shocked. If you stand in the back of your church during the sermon, you'll see people sitting there like stones, and then you'll some of them will start a nod. will go like that. You'll, you'll see their head kind of drop a little bit. And then they'll stop. And then some people, you'll see them look like that. They're shaking their head. They're nodding off. They're, they're not hearing any, anymore. They have become tone deaf. See? And in 2022, you were tone deaf. In 2023, uh-uh. Nope. Not this year. You're going to download the Holy Ghost and his power. You are going to see huge changes in your life and your family's life. Your kids are not going to die and go to hell. They're not going to stay addict. They're not going to get pregnant again. They're not going to get married again. They're not going to get in another sick relationship. You are going to develop your authority and your power in Christ by no longer taking him for granted. 
you're no longer going to be a desensitized Christian where you're just kind of going through the motion. Uh, no, that's not going to happen. Not this year. I mean, it's going to be big. You know what the problem was? You forgot. Yeah. You forgot. You forgot when you came to Christ. You were a harmatilus, a, a horrible sinner. You were a rotten person. You remember that? You were a total loser. You sucked, friend. I'm sorry. Um, you came to Christ. You were trash. You know what happened? Man. Father ran to you. Oh, he moved on you quick. He wanted you so bad. And he forgave you of every sin you ever committed. You were sinless. You didn't even have any sin anymore. He forgave every sin you ever committed. And you were so grateful. Do you remember that? It's called your first love is what they call it. Oh, you had your first love. It was so exciting. And then later on, you lost your first love. Revelation 3. And you forgot. And when someone forgets what they were forgiven, they find it difficult to forgive others. Because they forgot what they were forgiven of. They forgot. You remember? If you do remember, you'll always be able to forgive others because Jesus said, freely you have received, so freely give. You can forgive your parents now in 2023. They're done. They're not your parents anymore anyway. You're not you're not a Smith or a Jones or a Valenzuela or a Gonzalez anymore. Listen. You are in the family of God, and your name, that is not your name anymore. You have a new name written down in glory. Revelation 3. You're a different person. You belong to a different family, and you don't have your parents anymore. Your heavenly father is your parent now. You transition from your family into his. Amazing, isn't it? I think. You got to stop pretending you're a Smith or a Jones or a Gomez. You're not. You're not. You belong to Father now. And you're not going to take him for granted anymore. You're going to be like this broken down bargain basement whore who was consumed with guilt and regrets. And when she left there, she never went back to prostitution. She never went back to sin. She probably had some kind of a giant ministry like Sister Edda or Catherine Coleman or somebody, somebody with broken heart, somebody who remembered what they were forgiven for. But if you've forgotten, take some time today, would you, and just remember what God forgave you for? And you won't believe it. A, a spirit of peace will come over you. When Jesus told that woman, your sins are forgiven, they've been released from you, go in peace, is what he said. That's what you will do. You'll go in peace. Amazing. Because you remember what you were forgiven of. You don't take it for granted anymore. You're no longer systematically desensitized. You're no longer just a church person. Okay? Listen, you've got to make major changes in 2023, and you're going to do it. It's going to happen. This woman did. This woman, I don't know if this was a New Year's event, but I don't know for the sake of this Bible study, I think I'll just make that up. This was a New Year's event. She wanted a new year. She wanted to start over. And she did. She started over huge. <laughs> she started over big time. That's what's going to happen to you. Because you remember what you were forgiven of. And because you remember now, you can forgive others. You, you're not going to lose.